this is a preview of the Radio Oddity RD5R programming software for DMR radios. This software is used to program the radio and this is a beta version. The actual version may be slightly different. The basic information screen gives you some very basic information about the radio and since I haven't read the information from the radio yet uh, most of it's blank but it gives you the ability to to look at the range and see the last time it was programmed, the CPS version, the hardware versions, and so on. In general, you won't be using this screen. The boot is a set and forget screen where you can choose between the normal picture, which is a welcome picture, it's not very meaningful, or a character string. And what I did on my radio is I put my call sign and then I put radio oddity below. I also put a power on password on my radio so that if my kids pick up my radio and turn it on, they can't accidentally transmit somewhere where they shouldn't be, which is everywhere on this radio. So I feel like it's important as a parent to protect my call sign and my children. So I have done that. Under the menu items, um, typically you want everything in here checked so you can change the options from within the radio menu. I'm going to skip over the number key assignment and go to general settings. On general settings, this is where you'll place your uh, radio ID, which in my case is 3118 for Indiana and then 115. And you can give your radio name, which I also give in my call sign. I was in the middle of recording, buddy. You screaming daddy while I'm recording is not very cool. Okay? You want me to turn on Hulk again? Let me finish this recording, then we'll watch Hulk if we have time. Okay? It won't take long. But now it's my turn. <clears throat> I'm going to start recording again. Okay, the other options on this general screen are kind of global settings. For instance, you can disable all the tones and you can affect the way the um, time, the, the scan works using time, carrier, search, and you can also put in this programming password. If you set this password and you write to the radio and you go back to read from the radio, it won't read from the radio until you put in the appropriate password. Use this with caution. You don't want to forget what the password is. I'm not sure how to recover if you do. There may be a way, but as far as I know, there is not. Um, another option here is this double weight. It's on main or active. And uh, what that does is it switches between either the main channel or the channel that was currently active. So if you have double weight turned on and for instance the bottom speaks and then you key up because the bottom was just active it'll key it'll transmit on the bottom whereas normally it would just probably transmit on the top I'll skip the rest of these settings for now under buttons you can adjust what the buttons on the radio do uh, for instance, the top button, you might want to be a zone selection button. So you click on that, and it allows you to select the zone. And if you hold it down, you might want it to turn on the flashlight. That'll go between the flashlight from being on to flashing to off. The bottom button, you may want to have a scan on, for instance. And when you're not scanning, you might want to turn on the emergency tone. Or you may want to just turn on the FM radio. Or perhaps you're more interested in the battery indicator to see how much battery is left. <clears throat> Whatever feature you want, you can assign to a button here. Um, probably FM would be a good one in my opinion. Uh, 2,000 milliseconds is about 2 seconds. I think 500 milliseconds is plenty. But you can adjust that however you'd like. You can also set up some predefined messages that can be sent out. Since we really don't have encryption in the amateur world, I in general don't go into what privacy is for. 
If you need it for commercial uses, you can read about privacy on other systems. The signaling system is, is another commercial feature that I, I skip over. It's not really used in the amateur world. Contacts. Your digital contacts are how you connect to other amateurs through either group contacts or private contacts. In general, we use group contacts. A group contact is known as a talk group. So when you bring up a contact, this one is a private contact. And if you go to this one here, contact number five, with the two people, that means a group. We'll open that up, and as you can see, it's a group contact. You give the contact a name, for instance, Indiana State would be one that I would use. And the group number for that is 3118. And that, that is how you create your contacts in this radio. Once you have a contact set, you can then set up what's called a, um, so a receive group. <clears throat> if you're using a uh, hotspot, sometimes a hotspot requires a receive group for talk group 9. So I'm just going to make one called talk group 9, and I'm going to give it the number of 9, which it will probably deny because it already exists. So I'm going to hit continue. And we'll go down here to 9, and we'll change this to another group. We'll call this one Tech 310, change its ID to 310. Then go back to Talk Group 9, and that's set. So now... those got set. It's under Indiana State. And it looks like we have an error here. So there's talk group nine. <clears throat> and here's Indiana State. And here's TAC 310. So the the screen that's producing the error I, I got closed and out of the way. So now we have to create what's called a receive group. So right click and we'll add. And for instance, if it was for our open spot, we would say open spot Indiana State, for instance. And I would add Indiana State and talk group nine together, but I do a channel. Our first channel has some garbage in it. I'll bring that up and see if we can change it. So we'll call this Open Spot Indiana. It is a digital channel. 436 is my frequency. I want to set the squelch. The receive group is going to be our Open Spot receive group. Our transmit group is going to be Indiana State. Peter time slot will be one. And this dual capacity direct mode needs to be unchecked. So, receive only is off. Vox is off. Timeout can be quite a bit less. And because it's my hotspot, I will say always. Power level will be low because it's a local hotspot. The transmits frequency is 436.00. And <clears throat> uh, this is how you program a, uh, a channel for a hotspot. So it's really a simplex channel, which is, one f which is 436 for receive and transmit. Low power because it's going to be local. Squelch of three is about where it needs to be for my area. That may vary for you. I gave it a meaningful name. The admin criteria, what that does is that that tells the radio when it's okay to transmit. By saying always, it means I can key up the radio at any point in time and it will transmit. If I had this set to color code, the, what happens if that color code's in use my radio will decline to transmit whenever it's in use. 
If you're on a repeater, color code is usually the option you want. Since this is for a hotspot, always is what I want. The receive group is, is what the channel is going to listen for, which is talk group 9 and talk group 3118. The color code should be set to 1. No emergency system. And my contact is for Indiana State. Repeater slot 1 because it's simplex. This doesn't actually matter. We're in simplex mode, so it's, it's going to be a tier 1 connection. And that's, that's how we configure channel. Now, in order to use the channel on a radio, you have to actually add that channel to a zone. So I'll take all these channels out of this zone. Oops. What happened here? Okay. Click here. Hold shift, click here, click delete, add my channel, move it to the top, and get rid of this channel 5, we want that. So now I have one channel for my open spot called Open Spot Indiana, and my zone is going to be called Open Spot. And that pretty much sums up the programming of the RD5R for, for an open spot. Another thing worth mentioning is the VFO. There's an A and a B, and you can set the parameters for each of those here under VFO A and B. Um, I, in general, just pick some analog frequencies and put them in. Um, I don't really use the VFO, but if you do, this is where you would set up the default channels for the VFO. Another thing you can do is you can make a scan list. So you add a scan list and you add a free bunch of frequencies to your scan list. <clears throat> Since I don't really have that many channels, uh, I can just select a few random ones here. Just for fun, I'll put in three of them here. And that's called scan list one. So now when I go to my channel, and I can say that if someone pushes the scan button while on this channel, I can specify that it use scan list one. If I don't, what will happen is I will get a invalid list. So I change that to scan list one. And now when on this channel, if I push the scan button, it will use scan list one. And, and that pretty much sums up the basics of the RD5R, uh, radio programming CPS. I will do more later, but for now, this is just a preview.